Hey everybody, uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a session, an online session on Q&A Maker and bots and getting started with bots. And during that session I had a lot of people ask me questions about the multi-turn capabilities of Q&A Maker. And that was outside of the scope of what I was presenting the other day, so I thought I would put together a really quick video uh, to show you guys how to get started uh, with, with that multi-turn conversations that you get in Q&A Maker. Now a lot of people wanted the multi-turn functionality to mean that they could prompt users for information or that they could somehow maintain the state of a conversation. And that's not really what the out-of-the-box uh, Q&A Maker bot multi-turn conversation is going to work. It's not really going to work that way. The multi-turn conversations is meant more to help guide users down a specific conversation and help them understand, you know, what what are their next steps and what they're searching for or asking about. Um, so to quickly show you what we're talking about, I wrote a very very simple uh, multi-turn Q and A bot, uh, and I'll and I'll show you guys that real quick, and then we'll walk through quickly how you can create your own uh, multi-turn bot as well because the functionality is pretty cool. So I'm over here in Microsoft Teams, and I've deployed my multi-turn Q&A uh, maker bot to Teams, and now I can talk to it. So I can say, hi, because I gave it a personality, it's going to respond to me with, uh, you know, some sort of response for whatever that built-in personality is. You can see it just comes back with hi, and I can say how are you, and it'll it'll, it'll have some of those canned responses in there because I added personality. Uh, but now I can actually interact with the multi-turn stuff that I created. Uh, so this is the Pate bot, so I can ask it what does Pate stand for, and the bot responds and it says, hey, it stands for Pate stands for powerful, alone, invincible together. And then you see we have these two buttons here. And these are the prompts that are created using a multi-turn conversation. So we're telling users, hey, here's what Pate stands for. Now here's some other things you might be interested to know more about. So I could look at the services or I could contact Pate. Well, let's click on check out our services. And when you click on that button, what it's actually doing is taking the text that you have for that and putting that as what the user says next. So again, this bot doesn't really have any intelligence to know that you know what are what are the possible things I can ask. It's 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 sending that information that's in that button as the next thing the user types. So I said, let me check out the services, and you can see the bot responds again with, hey, here's some information about the services, and then we have buttons. So we can see what the specific services are and then again we can now click on a button to find out more about that service so you can see how uh, this these multi-turn conversations really allow you to guide a user in a path you want them to go and it gives them more relevant information back so I can say now I want to know about Microsoft Teams CIE and it gives the text back for that so we've taken them through this path where someone just wanted to know what Pate stood for to well here's our services to hey you know select your service you want to know more about and because of the way it's, the bot's configured, the user could just ask, you know, what what are your services? And it will be able to use, you know, the bot will be able to know, say, hey, that means you're asking about our services again, so I can bring them back to that part of the conversation, okay? So um, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to get set up quickly using a multi-turn conversation bot. And the way these multi-turn bots work if you're extracting information from an existing FAQ, which I highly recommend you do is extract from your uh, your docs and don't build it from scratch from the UI. I think it makes more sense if you do that. So what I've done is I've created a Word document here that is kind of the information that was used for, for seeding this bot. So the way the multi-turn extraction works is it looks for a hierarchy of headings for how to extract information. So here our header one is the question what does Pate stand for? And our header one here is what services does Pate offer? And the header two, the subheader, 
is the actual prompts that are going to be displayed to the user. Okay, so as you build out this text, the header one is going to be, you know, the first question a person asks, and the header twos are the prompts you want to give to to the user. And you can actually embed these lower. So you go, you can go a header three, a header four. So based upon your hierarchy, you could go multiple levels down. We're just going to start with two of this example, though. So we have the questions: What does Pate stand for? What are your services? And then how do I contact Pate? And that's what we're doing. And if you look at the uh, multi-turnbot page within Q&A Maker, it's telling you how to build your own multi-turn document. And it gives you some very important information. It says you need to use different header sizes. It tells you that the first letter of each header must be capitalized. And it's saying that the headers cannot end with a question mark. There's also a link to a sample document that you can use and download and make your changes. So if we look at our Word document here, I've got my headers all start with capital letters and I have no question marks at the end of my headers. So this document should work great. Okay. So let's go ahead and use this document and create us a multi-turn bot. So I'm going to go over into Q&A Maker and I'm going to click on Create a Knowledge Base from within Q&A Maker. So one of the first things it asks you to do is to have a service created. And I'm not going to go through the steps of creating this Azure service here for this video. I've actually created that in another video on the Q&A Maker. So I'll just link to that old video in the description. And you can go there to see how to create that, create that Azure service if you need to do it. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to use an existing service that we already have. So I will select my tenant. I'll select my subscription and the service that I had previously created. I am going to name my knowledge base and we will call this the uh, multi Q&A bot. And then it's asking us to populate that knowledge base. And I do like, I do like one of the things I do like about Q&A Maker is you can populate your knowledge base with a pre-existing document or a pre-existing web page uh, so you don't have to start from scratch. And a lot of us have that information out there already um, and it's just easier to have something to start with. And there's also a checkbox here to enable multi-turn extraction. So I'm going to enable multi-turn extraction from the document I'm going to upload and it's asking for default answer text. And this is basically uh, what do you want to display if there's no extracted answer uh, for the document. So for our default answer for our Pate bots, I'm just going to say contact Pate at info at pategroup.com. Now it's asking us to, uh, where do we want to extract from? We can specify a URL, but we're going to add that Word document that I created. So that Word document is right here. And I'm going to give the bot a personality. I highly recommend you do this. It does add that something extra to your bot so that it can respond to common things like, hey, how are you doing? Uh, what's your favorite color? Or you can give it a professional friendly or witty. You can give it different personalities. So I'm just going to select the professional personality. And now I'm going to create the knowledge base where it's going to go through that Word document and try to extract out that prompt information. Okay, so here we are. And if you look at the prompts, um, it didn't actually extract those prompts. It didn't work. And, you know, if you're getting started with this, I actually ran into this a few times and it was pretty frustrating. I, I, I followed the directions. Um, if you can see the, the, the contact us, that was one of my prompts that was supposed to exist, but that didn't get created as a prompt. My services didn't get created. If we look at the Word document here, the rules were have a heading. So here's a heading one and a heading two. Okay, that's right. Uh, the headings start with capital letters and none of the headings end in question marks. So you would think this would work. However, if you look at one of the responses, one of the responses ends in a question mark. And it turns out that if any of your responses end in a question mark, the extraction does not work either. So when you're creating your document, make sure that none of your responses or headers ends in a question mark. So if I change this last question here, the responses are to what are our services, I can change it to our services include. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this and we're going to go through the process again. And all I basically did was remove that question mark. So if we come back over into Q&A Maker, click on Create a Knowledge Base, specify our tenant, our subscription, 
and that pre-created service, name the knowledge base as, we should call it test2, enable multi-turn, contact Pate for more info, give it professional personality, and let's add our updated file. And now we'll create the knowledge base. And you can see that our prompts still didn't get created. So what you're going to find when you go through trying to have your FAQs extracted for multi-turn is that it can be a little finicky. Um, even if you follow the directions, it may not extract those prompts correctly. So let's go back to our document and let's see what else we can do to improve the chances uh, of this being e extracted properly. So all of our headings start with capital letters. We got rid of the question marks, the end of the headers, and at the end of the responses. Um, but if we look at it, we see that we have a header here that doesn't have a subheader. And although it's not a requirement for every heading to have a subheading for a prompt, uh, in fact, you can maybe have an extraction that works fine one time and fails another. Um, but something you can do if you're having problems getting these extractions to work is to uh, make sure all of your headings have subheadings. So now to this one, let's go ahead and since one of our headings doesn't have a subheading, let's just add a subheading to it. So I added a subheading for how do I contact Pate called call us. And that's all I've done to this document that just failed previously. And again, I'm, I want to point out that I've had instances where it extracted fine where I had a header without a subheading. So it's, it's a little finicky. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back into Q&A Maker and let's create one more knowledge base. So again, we'll select our tenant, we'll select our subscription, select our service. We'll name our knowledge base one more try. We'll enable multi-turn. Default is contact Pate today. We'll add our new file, which is our updated Word document and we'll give our bot a professional personality. And now one more time, we'll try to create our knowledge base. And you can see it took a second to refresh, but it did actually add our prompts for us. So we had the prompt of contact us for when someone says, what does Pate stand for? We also have, when someone asks what services does Pate offer, our prompts are the different services. So, so again, looking back at that Word document, what does Pate stand for? prompt them for contact us. Go back to Q&A Maker. What does Pate stand for? Prompt them with contact us. So we can actually test this bot now doing a clicking on the test button here. I can, I can, I can ask what does Pate stand for? And it responds with Pate stands for a powerful and invincible together and then there is the prompt. The prompts are now working. I can click on contact us and it shows you the information for contact us. Now from here, you can go in and if you wanna add more content to your responses, you can simply edit that here. You can also add additional prompts. So maybe when someone asks, what does Pate stand for? Not only when I want, do I want to prompt them to contact us, maybe I want to also prompt them to check out our other services. And we already have an existing question for what are our services. So we can actually link a prompt to our existing question. So let's click on the link to add an additional uh, prompt. Uh, the prompt's gonna say, how about uh, check out our services? If I can spell things correctly, check out our services. And then we can link it to an existing question. So if we start searching, I can type in the word service and we can see that we have our existing question of what services does Pate offer? So I can click on this and, I've, and save it, and I've now created an additional prompt that links to an existing question we already have. So you can go into Q&A Maker and you can make your prompts pretty dynamic, pretty deep, um, and you can, you can get really complicated with these things. And there's a lot of great blog posts out there that kind of walk you through the thought process and how you should architect these multi-turn bots because it can get fairly complicated depending on how deep you go, but there's a lot of power in these as well. So let's go ahead and save and train this one more time. And now let's click on that test button to test it out. So now if I say, or ask, what does Pate stand for? 
My response now has two prompts, contact us and check out our services. If I click on check out our services, it takes me to the question, the response for the question, what, uh, what are paid services? And then here's the response for that. And then here are the other prompts for the different services. So I can click on Microsoft Teams CIE and get the response for that. So you can see how dynamic this can be and how powerful this can be and how deep you can go with it. So, you know, check it out and try it. And you can all, you also see how finicky uh, that extraction process can be. It's a great way to get started uh, extracting from an existing FAQ instead of starting from scratch. Um, uh, Microsoft offers an example template you can use and you can, you can work with that, but you have to be careful editing it that you don't end up in some situation where it won't extract properly. Um, when all else fails, you can go through and build out your prompt structure, like with your different headers, and then maybe for your responses, keep those super, super simple, and then edit those within the, um, the Q&A Maker itself. I'll actually give you guys a link to this existing uh, document that we used for extraction, so you can use it to play with it and, and have a simple extraction document that works to play from. Uh, but from here, I you know recommend that you guys play with it. This is really easy to get started. The multi-turn turn stuff is really cool. Uh, we're actually looking at putting one of these together for the Paint Group website because I think it's a great way to guide users in a guided conversation um, and a, a very easy to understand bot. And again, if you need to learn how to uh, create one of these bots from scratch, I didn't walk you guys through the creation of the service, or if you need to learn how to actually publish this bot to Teams and use it in Teams, you can look at my previous video on using Q&A Maker, which I will link to in my blog post and in the description of this video. And you can go to that video to see how to go through that process of creating the service as well as publishing the bot to Teams. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.